Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so let's join in the following confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come now before him and 
Romans, chapter 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. I was visiting an aunt many years ago with one of my friends, and just before we arrived, I turned and said to James, my aunt is a terrible name dropper. She'll want to tell you who she knows and who she's seen recently. Well, we got out of the car and said hello, and straight away she said, we had Prince Edward come and visit us last week. Well, James and I had to suppress our laughter. Prince Edward's mother is, of course, the Queen. Now, I've never met the Queen, although I did once catch a glimpse of her in a royal car when she visited Southport in the mid-1980s. I was stood near Chapel Street Station with thousands of others, but she clearly saw me because as the car went past, I could see her waving. Now, I may not know the Queen personally, but like all of us, I, I do know a good deal about her. And one thing that is clear is the Queen is a follower of Jesus Christ, a, a Christian disciple. Now, that means that we have a lot in common with the Queen, although you might not think so. Every Christian believer is a member of the only royal family that counts for all eternity, and that's the family of God. So Christian faith is a great leveller. For the Queen, as for all of us, a life of Christian discipleship flows from gratitude for God's mercy given to us through the death of Jesus on the cross for our sin. And that's why this passage in Romans begins, therefore I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Chapter 12, verse 1 of Romans. At the Queen's coronation, she joined in a prayer found in the old Book of Common Prayer, which echoes this very passage from Romans 12. Grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we may obtain remission of our sins. And here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee. You might recognise those words from our communion service, although... Uh, the words have been modernised a bit. For 70 years of her reign, the Queen's life and service have amply demonstrated that she meant those words from Romans chapter 12. Firstly, she's demonstrated self-sacrifice. In fact, even before she was Queen, that was in evidence. On the 21st of April 1947, the young Princess Elizabeth was with her parents and younger sister on a tour of South Africa. It was her 21st birthday. In a radio broadcast from Cape Town, the princess dedicated her life to service with these words. We must give nothing less than the whole of ourselves. There is a motto which has been borne by many of my ancestors, a noble motto, I serve. 
I should like to make that dedication now. It's very simple. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. But I shall not have the strength to carry out this resolution alone unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. I know that your support will be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow and God bless all of you who are willing to share in it. The essence of self-sacrifice is not suffering a loss. It is to give ourselves back to God, to make our lives totally available to him. The cost of commitment is real, but we've experienced God's mercy in Jesus. We gladly pay the price. We do that because we want to thank him. We want to please him with the whole of our lives. If we want to please God, then our lives will be marked by the offering of our bodies as living sacrifices to God. That is the first mark of Christian commitment, self-sacrifice. And then there is faithful service. If we want to please God, then our lives will be marked by faithful service. And the principle is in verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. This is what Jesus says to his followers in Mark chapter 10. Whoever wants to become great amongst you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now that theme of serving rang through the prayers in the Queen's original coronation service. This thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, Bless and sanctify thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, thy servant, Queen Elizabeth. And then the new queen at the time was urged, so faithfully serve our Lord Jesus Christ in this life that you may reign forever with him in the life which is to come. Now, in the evening on the day of her coronation, the queen made a broadcast. In it, she said, Throughout this memorable day, I've been uplifted and sustained by the knowledge that your thoughts and prayers were with me. I have in sincerity pledged myself to your service, as so many of you are pledged to mine. Throughout all my life and with all my heart, I shall strive to be worthy of your trust. I thank you all from a full heart. Now, what's Jesus looking for in our lives? What does he think is important? It's not the number of palaces and castles that we could call home or whether presidents and prime ministers come knocking on our door or the amount of gold leaf on our carriage. What Jesus is looking for is a life that's in line with his, a life of service. Whoever wants to become great amongst you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Now, we don't find that easy. The good news is that we have help. We have a servant. And our servant is Jesus himself. He's not just an example to us, though he is that. It's all very well wanting to be different, but we find ourselves powerless to change ourselves. And that's why Jesus has stepped in. A new life is Jesus' free gift to us. He's paid the price. He's given his life as a ransom for many. So whatever service God has equipped you for, you're to do it. And of course, we do it in his strength, in his power. Here we are on Pentecost Sunday, recognising God's spirit sent to us to empower us to be the people he would have us be. Now, this faithful service is marked by humility. Verse three, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Apparently the queen was in a meeting uh, once when somebody's mobile phone went off. Uh, the phone's owner left it ringing, too embarrassed to respond to it. And the queen said, I think you should answer that might be someone important. We should be thankful as well in our service. Verse six, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. It's only by the grace of God that we can serve all. Apart from being humble and thankful, we also need to work hard and to do so without complaining. Verse eight, if it is showing mercy, let them do it cheerfully. Cheerful and willing service lifts the spirits of everyone else around. Grumpy service drags everyone down. So if we want to please God, then our lives need to be marked firstly by self-sacrifice and secondly by faithful service. And to those two, we can add one more thing from this passage, and that is sincere devotion, verses 9 to 
13. Love must be sincere. Hey, what's evil? Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Now, back in 1957, when she was 31, the Queen made the first of those Christmas broadcasts uh, that were televised. She was in, at Sandringham, and in the course of it, she spoke of the sometimes disturbing speed of technological change. And she said, but it is not the new inventions which are the difficulty. The trouble is caused by unthinking people who carelessly throw away ageless ideals as if they were old and outworn machinery. They would have religion thrown aside, morality in personal and public life made meaningless, honesty counted as foolish, and self-interest set up in place of self-restraint. It's hard, isn't it, to not to apply some of those words to some of the leaders that we have today. Today, the Queen went on, today we need a special kind of courage, not the kind needed in battle, but a kind which makes us stand up for everything that we know is right, everything that is true and honest. We need the kind of courage that can withstand the subtle corruption of the cynics. Now, those words are just as applicable, perhaps even more so half a century later. Real love is heart, a heartfelt desire for the good of the other. It's long term. It's unwavering. It doesn't depend on how much love we get back. It affects what we do, how we behave towards people. It makes us willing to pay a price in order that others might benefit. The truth is that total self-sacrifice and a lifetime of faithful service are worse than useless if they don't flow from love. The commitment Christ demands is unlike any other. It's not optional. It's not a matter of personal preference. None of us are exempt from its demands. It reaches into the whole of our lives and it's not easy. But it's the only appropriate response to God's mercy towards us in Christ. Christian commitment takes the form of self-sacrifice, faithful service and sincere devotion. The Queen's been a great model of these qualities, but uh, as I said at the beginning, we're all part of the same royal family. We have no need to name drop about anyone that we might have met because we know the King of Kings and Queens, Presidents and Prime Ministers, the one true Lord who left glory for cross. I urge you, says the Apostle Paul, I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Can't say no to that, can we? Let's pray. Lord, as uh, we join in the celebrations amongst our nation for uh, 70 years of the reign of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, we thank you for her example, uh, which in many ways, um, we thank you for her example of Christian service. But even more particularly, Lord, we thank you for your great love for us, a love which took you to the cross, uh, and a love which demonstrates so clearly self-sacrifice, faithful service and sincere devotion. Help us to recognise you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and help us to offer ourselves to your service. Amen. for her majesty in honor of the faithful hearts 
who chose to serve and to play her part. Many nations have gathered here from the mountain heights. Let the song ring clear, celebrating the answered call. Is the call we hear with hope in our hearts, joining as one, making history? Let that vessel through this jubilee rise at Benson, thanking God for her majesty. God's good grace be upon her now to complete the task and fulfill her vow. May the trust in Christ she has held so long be the truth that burns brightly on. Rise up and serve. Here's the call we. In our hearts, joining as one, making history. Let fanfare sound through this jubilee. Rise at Benson, thanking God for her majesty. believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, the way, the truth, and the life, we give you thanks for your servant, Elizabeth, our Queen. May she be ever provided with all she may need for her ministry among us, strengthened to meet every demand which her office may make, and in all things nourished by your word and example, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign, world without end. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reign of your servant, Queen Elizabeth, and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we pray for the power of the Spirit to be at work in our lives. Come, O Holy Spirit, come as holy fire and burn in us. Come as holy wind and cleanse us within. Come as holy light and lead us in the darkness. Come as holy truth and dispel our ignorance. Come as holy power and enable us in our weakness. Come as holy life and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are set free from the service of ourselves to, to be your servants to the world. Amen. And we just have a time of silence as we bring our own prayers to God now. We ask all of these things in the name and for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.